Um, so what is sleep also? What is clear is that sleep is not just lack of uh, activity. Uh, and if we could even see that bit up there. Uh, not sure how we do this. Hmm. Okay, let's try it like this. Uh, so one could think that sleep is just simply that uh, we're not alert and the brain is not doing anything, but this is definitely not the case. So when we're measuring the blood supply, for instance, uh, to the brain, it's found that the blood supply is exactly the same when we're awake doing stuff as when we are lying uh, uh, and sleeping during the night. So it's about 750 milliliter blood every minute and it's not changing whether we are awake or whether we are asleep. Also when we are looking at the metabolism uh, during normal sleep, uh, this is REM sleep, uh, you see lots of activity uh, in the brain. It's different from what you see when you are awake, obviously, because uh, you're doing different things when you're awake from when you're sleeping or when you're having REM sleep. But the point is that there's lots of activity and if you look at it overall, the activity is pretty much the same. It's just specifically which areas are being activated uh, at different times during sleep. Highly individually varying, uh, but with some common features that we will come back to. Another way of looking into uh, sleep and which is the classical approach to actually understanding that there are things happening uh, when we're sleeping rather than just uh, not having any consciousness is uh, the electroencephalography which was developed by Hans Berger back in the 1930s. And basically what he saw was that the brain is hugely active uh, when we're asleep it's changing its pattern of activity, it's changing from being relatively low wave, relatively high frequency uh, activity to being high amplitude, relatively slow wave uh, activity which characterizes uh, uh, the sleeping uh, stages. And it's pretty much because of the development of the EEG technique that we now begin to understand the physiology of sleep and that there are different sleep stages that we're going through when uh, falling asleep. So this is just to give you some examples of uh, what it looks like. Uh, so here you have an awake person and you don't really, at, at least with the naked eye, uh, see any clear rhythmicity. It's all pretty uh, low amplitude and relatively, you would say, disorganized uh, without any uh, clear features in it. Then as you begin to go to sleep, as you can see here, stage one, which means that you're sort of in between uh, being awake and uh, sleeping, uh, you see some of these features popping up, which are so-called sleep spindles, uh, which are really characteristic of persons who are about to go to sleep, highly synchronized uh, bouts of uh, activity in presumably a large part of uh, the neuronal network that uh, is being recorded from here. Uh, so you will see an increased number of these and then as you fall more and deeper and deeper into sleep, uh, you see more of them occurring and at some point you will see a more regular feature of high amplitude uh, uh, activity which eventually turns into uh, this stage four sleep which is really the deep uh, sleep where it's really difficult to wake people up and where you see this high amplitude, low frequency uh, uh, frequ uh, uh, waves uh, in, in the EEG. Then now and again during uh, sleep, during the night, you will go into another stage which is the rapid eye movement uh, sleep which as you see is very very similar to what you see when you're awake. Uh, so with an EEG activity a pattern of EEG activity which very much resembles uh, what you see when uh, subjects are awake. The only thing is that at this point uh, people are 
more relaxed than at any other point during the night. Uh, the muscles are completely paralyzed, you could say. Uh, subjects are also less easy to wake up, uh, so they are sleeping for sure, uh, but the activity is very similar to uh, the awake state. Uh, so this, of course, uh, gives some questions of what is actually going on uh, during these different phases. So during the night, if you have a good eight hours of sleep, uh, you will see that you will be uh, rhythmically going in and out of these different stages. So usually uh, we spend uh, some minutes, usually uh, could be longer in some cases, in sort of borderline uh, stage one uh, uh, before falling asleep. And then we gradually go from level one to two to three and into uh, deep uh, stage four sleep. Then we go out of that again, we almost go back to the waking state, but then go back into deep sleep again, go back, maybe wake up for a short period of time, very often without remembering it, then going back, not really reaching stage four, but again going back to almost awake, going into uh, again stage two here. So what you see and which characterizes uh, normal sleep, a normal sleep cycle during the night is that to begin with we spent more time in the stage four sleep uh, than later on during the night. Uh, so there are more bouts of uh, stage four sleep and they also last, last longer. Later on, close to the time that we wake up in the morning, you see more of the REM sleep which comes in and which also uh, stays on for longer time. And we also tend to wake up uh, more often uh, when we're uh, uh, getting closer to the morning. So that, that uh, quite clear uh, um, regularity in, in uh, the sleeping pattern and this seems to be pretty well programmed by the brain so this is something that most people will uh, experience during the night and this is what can be used also diagnostically to help people who do not uh, have sufficiently good sleep and who don't feel uh, uh, probably uh, uh, rested after having uh, slept even a full night, very often because the sleep quality is not sufficiently good, that they don't really reach the stage four sleep, uh, which uh, seems to be really important for you to, to feel that you've been resting and, and that you feel recovered after having slept. So in some cases, uh, subjects don't really reach the stage four, and this is something that uh, will need some uh, kind of uh, change in their daily life in order to have a more regular uh, uh, sleep during the night. Um, certainly, uh, this can be influenced by uh, a lot of different things. Uh, there have been exper experiments done where subjects have been uh, woken up each time they went into REM sleep uh, if you do that and through that prevent them from actually getting REM sleep, what you will see is that they will, the next night, uh, have much more REM sleep, so they will again try to catch up. So it seems important for the brain to have these different uh, phases, these different stages. If you interrupt one of them, uh, the brain won't like it and it will try to uh, restore that amount of uh, uh, REM sleep uh, later on. We don't know why, but we know that it's important. Uh, what we also know is that uh, dreaming is relatively rare uh, when we have stage four or one of the other sleep stages. Uh, whereas when subjects are being woken up in REM sleep, they very often report to be dreaming. Uh, this is being debated a little bit uh, because it turns out that uh, people may also be dreaming in the other sleep stages 
but they just tend to forget it more easily than when they dream in the REM sleep, and this is difficult to dissociate. What seems to be clear is that when you have dreams during your REM sleep, uh, there tends to be more of uh, activity involved in, physical activity involved in, in those dreams. And this fits nicely with also the findings when you look at uh, the brain activity during REM sleep, where you will see quite a lot of activity in the motor areas. But that activity in the motor areas, and it, it's really in, in huge parts of the motor areas, involving also the primary motor cortex, where you see lots of activity in uh, all the cortical spinal neurons anyway. And that means the output from the cortex to the spinal cord is actually very, very active during REM sleep. But it doesn't result in any muscular activity. In the, uh, on the contrary, the muscles are very relaxed during the REM sleep. The reason for that is that at the same time as this uh, REM sleep is being induced, there's also a huge inhibition being exerted onto the spinal motor neurons, which prevents the cortical activity from actually getting through to the muscles. Uh, so it's really a program which involves the whole body, uh, the whole nervous system, uh, at one point letting the cortex doing a lot of activity which would normally result in muscle activity but preventing that muscle activity by exerting a tonic inhibition of the spinal motor neurons. Uh, in some cases, this spinal in inhibition is not working the way it should. It, it's most obvious in animals, small puppies, for instance, when they're dreaming that they're running after the cat or whatever, you see that paws going like that, uh, mainly because that inhibitory mechanism is not fully developed yet. It also develops uh, uh, later on in life in, in humans, and it's very often seen in elderly subjects who uh, have problems in uh, suddenly doing all sorts of movements uh, during their sleep. When they're dreaming, they start maybe even walking around doing stuff uh, without uh, being awake, but simply not having that efficient inhibition of uh, the spinal uh, motor neurons.